Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please bow with me in a word of prayer. Father God, in name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your name on this wonderful day, Heavenly Father. We thank you that you've touched us this morning. It woke us up, the stars on our way. We know, realize, and recognize that our very life is because of you. The use of life by limbs, blood, and blood. Our very motion is because of you. And we want to glorify you and lift you up, Lord. We thank you for just touching the sick and afflicted, healing them, shut in, Heavenly Father, allow them to see the word, the homeless, providing food and shelter for them. Heavenly Father, thanks for your head, look on our head of our nation, head of our states, look on our pastor. Bless each and every one of us. Allow us to come together one more time and glorify your name. Praise you and let you work. And if I look all over, thank you for looking on those that do not know you as Lord and Savior in their life. Give them one more opportunity to come into your Savior grace before it's too late. And if I look, thank you and we praise you. We pray that each and everything we do today glorify your name and lift you up. The Lord of Lord and King of Kings. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands. Good morning again, church. This morning, we're being blessed with the guest speaker, Reverend Dr. E. Diane Holloway, and she comes with such great educational background, New Brunswick Theological Seminary. Amen. Looks like, well, and she's also one of the associate pastors at the Shiloh Baptist Church. And I'm going to hold on to this resume because we need to reach out to her because she has done so many things in the community and relevant business and management experience. It's too many things here for us to even go over at this time, but we are so grateful that you're here this morning. God bless. The next voice you'll hear will be the Reverend Dr. E. Diane Holloway. First of all, let me give thanks to God because he is first in my life. Uh, he woke me up this morning. It wasn't a time clock. It wasn't uh, the noise I heard in the bedroom ne next to me. It was God who woke me up. How many know that the Lord woke me up? How many know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? Thank you because every time we inhale and exhale, it's because the Lord Opportunity 
to stand up and have a word for the Lord. Amen? To speak to God's people. And I am grateful. Absolutely grateful. Bless the Lord. Yeah, bless the Lord. Um, if you have your Bibles, and normally uh, my custom is that we stand for the word, because when, when God's word is going forward, the Holy Spirit is moving. If it was President Trump, everybody would be on their feet. God is moving. Amen. So we give him honor and those who can. Uh, turn to uh, scripture, John 4, 1 through 4, and then we're going to drop, drop down to verse 39 and 40. And it reads this way. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus with him himself did not baptize his disciples did, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must need go through Samaria. Somebody said go through Samaria. Go through Samaria. Then came he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now drop down to verse 39. And may many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that I have ever done. When, so when the Samaritans came to him, they besought him that he may tarry with them, and he abode there for two days. And I want to preach on, come to Jesus. Amen? All right. Amen. Father God, you may have to see. Father God, we come before you. Thank you and praise you and glorify you. Because you are worthy to be praised, Father. You are the great I am that I am. You created everything. You created this time and this space. There's a time for everything the sister told me this morning. And right now, this is a time when we will turn our face to you to reach out to you for our substance. Beloved. Sometimes in our lives we find ourselves in hard and depressing places. Many who are marginalized are carried off of planet and substandard conditions or predicaments because of the greed of the so-called elite around us. They have these things. Mm -hmm. Moreover, we are ostracized, passed over, and often written off by the very society which has inflicted our pain and suffering. Uh -huh. They tell us there is justice in the land, but for most of us, it's hard to see through the blatant inequities we suffer. What's worse is for some of us, uh, the issue plaguing our lives appear to be endless and beyond our control. One moment in your life, you're walking and talking, then the next moment, you're comatose by unexpected circumstances of life. I know somebody here knows what I'm talking about. Amen. We easily become the victims of prejudice motivated crime simply because of the social group that we belong to or the hue of our skin. Exclusion from mainstream opportunities impact on our health, family, jobs, reputation, religion, community status, economics, you name it. Labels like outcasts, unfit, eyeballs, strange, misfit, are just some of the labels they put on us. Because a lot of times they don't want to accept us because they know that in most things we excel extremely well. Am I lying about it? Even in their sports, we excel extremely well. Many are forced into our own personal Samaria. Our text is preceded by chapter 3, where Nicodemus, or Nick at night, a Pharisee, comes to Jesus under the cover of darkness. Chapter 4, where we've landed, tells us that in the scorching heat of the midday, a tired and thirsty, a human Jesus encountered a wayward woman at Jacob's well, who tries to avoid the dark gossip of women who customarily socialize at the well in the cool of the day. This so-called loose woman had five husbands. I know most of you have heard the story. And the one man that she shackled with now is not a husband. Yet, she tells Jesus she has no husband. She, like many in her condition, has 
her own Samaritan experience. Both chapter 3 and 4 demonstrates that regardless of your social status in life, whether you're a Pharisee or a harlot, rich or poor, outcast or in the crowd, male or female, we all need to do what? Come to Jesus. Amen? Amen. This morning I want to talk to you, uh, those of you who are in the midst of a Samaritan life experience. Samaria in the Bible is located in the central highland region of ancient Israel, situated halfway between Galilee to the north, and, that's, and Galilee is known for where Jesus did most of his ministry, his healing ministries. And it's also located uh, between Judea and the south, better known as a place of praise. Because of Samaria's tainted history and deplorable conditions, polite society avoided the region. The social elites would rather take the long way around the city, which would take three days, sometimes using uh, the, uh, the, uh, the king's passage, which goes around Judea, rather than go through Judea and have a one-day journey. During Jesus' ministry, Samaria was stuck in the middle, like a lot of us who are stuck today in the middle of a bad situation. We can see where we ought to be, but we are not there yet. And we know what we should have, but we don't have it yet. It's a living Samaria. Beloved, Samaria was notorious for being a place of the sick, social shun, because of its reputation of dysfunction, abuse, and rebellion. Shunning is an act of social rejection or emotional distance. In a, re in a religious context, shunning is a formal decision by a group of people to cease interacting with others in society and follows a particular set of rules, and most of those rules are their rules. Amen? Amen. Social rejection occurs when a person or a group deliberately avoids association with and habitually keep away from an individual or groups. Social rejection has been established to cause psychological damage and has been categorized as torture or punishment. Social justice has been uh, customary and legalized and institutionalized. If you have not been shown or if you have been shunned, you know what I'm talking about. Some of us are shunned on our jobs. Some of us are shunned in our neighborhoods. Some of us are shunned when we go to the bank and try to get a loan. Some of us know about being shunned, amen? amen. Samaritan people were labeled as biologically and religious half-breeds. It's a state of being where life is difficult and stigmatized and being ritually unclean and contaminated. Samaria is a callous and unfair place, mm. a place of confusion, a place of chaos, a place of pain, a place of loss. Social rejection is an unsteady and difficult life. Has anybody been in a Samaritan place in their life? Amen. If you have, just say amen. Amen? amen. It's a place where nothing seems to turn out right or the way you expect it to. Things just refuse to line up right no matter how hard you or how long you work at it. It seems that in Samaria, things always go in the wrong direction. Let's not fool ourselves, though, beloved. I know some of us, uh, we say we live right, we do the right thing, we work, we take care of our families and all that, but let's, let's, let's not fool ourselves. Because even in the church, Christians want to read their own selected version of the word and offer praises the way they want to praise and they want to worship their own little golden cats, their little, little gods. So this means some of us make life hard because we choose to do things we know are not right in God's sight. Like for instance, 
And some of us think that uh, big sins, there's big sins and there are little sins. There are no big sins and there are little sins. Sin is sin. sin. Amen? Amen? Sometimes we know there's certain foods we shouldn't eat because our body is a temple. But we eat them anyway. And they ruin our health. We date and marry ungodly folk. We go to ungodly places and we hang out with ungodly folk. The Bible says, come out from among them. Mm. Amen? We are peculiar people. We're selective. God has blessed us and we're peculiar. And we need to come out from among them. And Samaria was a place where the people worshiped God, but also worshiped other gods. 2 Kings 17.33 says, And because they tried to serve more than one God, they were considered unclean and unrighteous. They believed in the word, but they had their own version of scripture and their own way that they wanted to practice religion. They were confused and mixed up. So going to church, beloved, doesn't necessarily make you righteous in God's eyes. Unfortunately, no matter who you are, or what issues you have. If you have never had a crisis in your life, I want to say to you, God bless you. <laughs> but most of us sitting in this sanctuary are either leaving a problem, dealing with a problem, headed to a problem, or know somebody with a problem. And that somebody sometimes want to make that problem our problem. Maybe your issue is, in, is visible and mine is undercover of the darkness, but we all have a Samaritan experience. All right. You may not have been, you may not have been ostracized because of your religion, ethnicity, or gender, but you have had other types of issues. And maybe some of you can relate, like failing health, mountain bills, bad credit, one check short of foreclosure. Those of us on pensions, Social Security, or have minimum wage jobs can barely pay our bills. We can't borrow from Peter to pay Paul because Peter is all tapped out. <laughs> Life burdens have been with us so long, people have stopped, in some cases, coming by to visit with us, giving up on us and counting us out. Sometimes when they see us coming, they know we got the same old story, they say, oh, well, here she comes. Let me go the other way. There is no helping hand out there anywhere. We're stuck in the middle. We want joy, but we need a miracle. How many can agree with me? We need a miracle, amen? We need somebody to step forward. The text tells us Jesus had the people of Samaria on his mind. The scripture says, therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus and baptized more disciples than John, though his disciples were the ones who did the baptizing, he left the dead and departed again for Galilee. Jesus tells his disciples, we must go through Samaria. Not around, not over, not under, not bypass, but we must go through Samaria. This is good news indeed, beloved, because when society wants you to believe that you have no value, I'm here to tell you that the devil is alive. Amen. And the truth ain't in it. We are all God's creation. And what God has created, I created my Bible that it was good and very good. I don't know about you. Jesus, our deliverer, has you and me on his mind, and he will meet us at our well of despair. He says in the text, it is needful that I go through Samaria. It's almost as if it was in his original plan to beat us at our point of despair. I am so glad today in the midst of our problems, Jesus still thinks about you and he thinks about me. Are you glad about that he still have you on his mind and have you? If you still feel glad about it, put your hands together and thank him for what he's doing. He is never too late to show up. And when my God shows up, he shows up on time. Yes. Amen? Right on time. He says, you have not because you ask not. Be encouraged, church. 
church. I know things are hard. I know things look scarce. I know things don't seem to be what they, what they should be. And you're not where you want to be. But be encouraged today. I just step by to let you know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. The scripture says, when the Samaritans come to Jesus, they besought him that he may tarry with them, and he abode with them for two days. When we come to Jesus, beloved, things happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but when we come to Jesus, he will be a lawyer in a courtroom, yes. a doctor in a sick room, Amen. a light in a dark room, a lily of a valley, a bridge over troubled water, a bright and morning star in despair. He will say, make a way out of nowhere. I don't know if somebody here knows what I'm talking about, but Jesus will make a way out of nowhere. I tried for myself, and he's never failed me yet. He walks with me, church, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I'm his own. He's my bread, he's a friend when I'm friendly. My God is a powerful God. I don't know about you, but my God can take care of business. God is with me and for me. And I can step out today and tell you, God is with you too. Does somebody know what I'm talking about? Give the Lord a praise. Somebody is 
trying to keep a roof over their head and, 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 and prosper on their jobs and accept the Father, you know. You know, have mercy. Have mercy. Bless your people. Father, when you bless us, before you bless us, we'll put our hands together and give you praise. Next week, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. amen.